Welcome to a little bit of Calm and Crazy. My name is Jennifer and today I'm excited to share with you my porch makeover with easy trash to treasure upcycles. Let's get into it. I was lucky enough to find several chairs on the side of the road. If you're not lucky like me and can find chairs on the side of the road, lucky, luckily these are a dime a dozen like at thrift stop shops or even friends sometimes are done with their chairs and you might be able to snag one or two from them. So these were in pretty rough shape and I needed to clean them off. I just go in with some soap and water and I just use a little scrub brush that I pick up with Dollar Tree, scrub them down, hose them off, let them dry. Luckily it was a nice sunny day. They dried really quickly. So I did go ahead and sand the entire piece. In this case, I'm hand sanding it. It didn't have a lot of real chippy pieces that I was too concerned about, and I was covering it with paint, but I did wanna make sure that I got any of the loose areas if anything was coming up, if anything was rough. I really wanted to make sure that I prepped the piece before I painted it. Once I had sanded it, wiped it off, it's all prepped and ready to be painted and I'm going in with Kilt's Blue Jupiter. I picked this up at Walmart. It is a beautiful blue gray color. I absolutely love it. I originally discovered it in the spray can, which is actually harder to find, but this is one of my favorite colors. So I painted the entire chair first in this and then I decided I wanted to go in with a two-tone color. Now that's what's so fun about paint is, you know what? That's exactly what it is, it's paint. If you get into it and you're like, yeah, I wanna change it up, you can. So after I had painted everything, I wanted to go two-tone. I first tried it out with Agave's, um, Waverly's Agave, but that was a little too green for me. And I didn't have anything else. This actually was going on really during the middle of the, like the stay-at-home orders that were going around. And there was like no paint to be found anywhere and I did have some Waverly Ocean but it was a lot brighter than what I wanted so what I did was I took some of the ocean and I mixed it with some of Waverly ink which is their black to create a darker blue and that turned out to be the perfect blue color so I went ahead back covered up where I put the agave and added the blue that mixture of the ocean and the ink exactly where I wanted it got the color that I wanted it and it turned out perfect. I love that this chair was already missing its back. I thought it would be the perfect footstool. I just needed to paint it in order to have it be a coordinating piece. But before I could do that, I needed to fix those empty holes in the back of the chair where originally the back of the chair was. So I just took one of the poles that originally was in the back of the chair and I cut little pieces of wood that I could just pop right into those holes to fill them. Using some wood glue and a mallet to pop those pieces in after that, and I had all the pieces in. Now, this chair was a little bit more for wear, and so there were areas where I did need to go in with some wood filler just to smooth it out and to help me out. After the wood filler dried, I did go in with my sandpaper in order to smooth that out. Now, I'm just hand sanding it here, but if you really wanted to make this smooth, then you, by all means, you could use an electric sander, and it would definitely be faster and more efficient. After I had this piece sand and prepped and ready to go, I did paint the bottom of it with Kilt's Blue Jupiter and the top of it with that combination of ocean and ink in order to have it coordinate with the chair that I had already painted. Once I had both pieces painted, I did go ahead and use a 220 grit sandpaper in order to distress them. Now, I personally like to distress some of my pieces and one of the reasons is, what first, this piece is gonna be outside, nature is gonna distress it, Two, I have three kids. Guess what? It's gonna get distressed that way as well. And if I have already previously distressed it, I am not gonna be distressed by seeing additional distressing. Does that make sense? I hope it does. So that is why I go ahead and add a little distressing. It just helps keep me from getting distressed later. After I had it distressed, I then went in and sealed it. Now, I do have a sprayer, so on this piece, I am choosing to spray to seal it, but I will be showing you a, how you can also not spray to seal, so hang tight for that. You will notice with a sealer that I use that it does give it just a slight sheen, even though it says it's flat. I also did leave this in my garage for an entire week before I brought it out so that I made sure that it would really cure before I left it out in the elements. 
So here I have a chair that has a back sill on it. It's a little wonky and I want to remove the back. This time I want to turn the chair into a side table. I love being able to repurpose items from their intended purpose into a different purpose. And I think that this will be the perfect side table for my lounge chair that is sitting on my patio. So I just put a little body weight into it in order to remove the back of the chair. I can't say that this will always work, but luckily it worked for this piece. Because I was lucky enough to have the back of the chair, I'm able to fill in the larger side holes with the original parts that were end or meant for that because those pieces are larger and then I can take the smaller ones for those middle holes. I hope that all makes sense. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut little round disc in order to fit into those holes just like I did in the previous project. I just used my mallet in order to uh, hammer those into place and this time I'm actually using an electric sander in order to sand this piece and I, I think it's kind of hard to tell, but this really kind of had a red tone to begin with and I was able to kind of tone it out. And I love, once I kind of got the gunky top layer off of this stool, I love the color of this stool. I love its natural wood color. And I knew that I wanted to leave it this way. I didn't want to stain it. I didn't want to paint it. I wanted to leave it in its natural state but I did want to go ahead and dress it up a little bit. So I used my Cricut, I got this design and I'm just going to stencil it on. And what's fun is you could do anything that matches your personal decor. Now I went ahead and made this a little bit smaller. I absolutely could have made it larger to fit the seat of the chair better. Um, but I was leaning on the side of cautious at the time, but that's okay. Now as I stencil, you see that I kind of really make sure my brush is more, it's called offloading. I make sure I don't have too much paint on it. I feel like my brush is almost dry and then I go in and I just pat, 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 pat. And that's how I keep my paint from going underneath my stencil. And I never seem to have a problem when I do it that way. Just a little pro tip. Once I have finished filling in my stencil, I do want to go in and remove all my stencil bits before the paint has time to set up and dry. and. The easiest thing to do is to use a tool to help you do that so that you're not smearing any of your paint, but you do want to do it before it dries. Otherwise, you do risk the chance of having your paint peel. Once it dried, I took a very fine grit sandpaper and I sanded it ever so gently just to soften it up a little bit. I really wanted to soften those edges. They were a little bit more sharp and bold and I just wanted softer edges. After I had sanded it, I'm going in with the general finishes flat using a foam brush in order to seal it. And I just wipe it on, you get it on and then you make sure that you just then have long strokes, like straight strokes, make sure your brush goes in the same direction and let it dry, add a second coat. I went in with three different coats. It does a beautiful job in sealing. I absolutely love this finish. Um, you can find it, different people sell it, different stores sell it. Um, you can just check online and see who in your area carries it if you're looking for something that is a great sealer. Make sure that you give it its proper cure time before you put it out in the elements or start setting things on it. But after that, it will be good to go. Now I have had these two crates outside for some time and we like to put things on them and you can tell that they are a little bit worn for wear. And so I wanted to give them a fresh coat of paint. But before I could do that, in order to have all the stains not come through, I needed to use a little shellac. Now this is great to kind of seal those stains in so that they won't pop through the paint. So I gave them a couple coats of the shellac first. It dries super quickly. And then I went in with some Rust-Oleum spray paint this is one of my favorite spray paints gave them a fresh coat of the white spray paint and then these were as good as new so when i found these chairs on the side of the road there were also some pots that were along with them and i decided to grab those and i wanted to give them a little bit of a makeover and this was super easy i just grabbed some waverly chalk paint and decided to give them a good coat of paint. Once I had painted them, I did seal them in order to help the paint last longer. Now, I am not 
afraid to repaint these every year if I need to, but just making these a little bit more bright white definitely matched my decor so much better and it just took me a couple of minutes but made all the difference. I did the exact same thing with a couple of terracotta pots that I had lying around. I do love terracotta, but I wanted to tone down the color a little bit, and so I went in with a dry brush technique instead to add a little bit more white to those. And that way I could kind of tie all of my pots together, and I love the way that they look. I picked up all of my flowers and plants at Walmart for five or less dollars each, I have said in past videos that I have a black thumb. These plants have all been planted at, at this moment, a couple of months and they are thriving and I could not be more excited. By combining some things that I've had for a while as well as some newer items, I was able to really give my porch a refresh and make it a place that my family and I really enjoy being. Not only is it a place where we can relax, but it is a place where my kids can play. I have three kids. I want them to feel like they can hang out and play here. So let me give you a little bit more of an up close look and tell you where a few of these items are from. This swing we have had for years. We got it at Costco. It is my favorite place to sit. The dark blue pillows we picked up at Costco this year. It was like two for 15. The white pillow was from Walmart. It was around $13. I absolutely love it. Now the chase is where my kids love to sit. The pillow on there also came from Walmart around $13 and then there's that little side table. I thought it was perfect to have right here so that you could sit down a drink, you could read a book right there and lay your book down. I just really felt like the chase needed its own little table. The home sweet home sign is actually a Dollar Tree DIY and I can link that video for you. Now I love having blankets outside. This is a covered porch and that blanket is just easy to toss into the wash when I need to give it a good bath. Now this table we have had as long as we have been in this house, which is over 15 years. I did add a couple more Walmart pillows. You guys, Walmart nailed it on the pillows this year. I absolutely am loving their pillows. The table runner is new. I got that from Amazon. It was around $20, which is actually what you would pay if you were to get the rope to make this yourself. And so I decided to save myself the time and just to buy it. Now the pot and the matching candle holder that is another DIY as well as well as the little tea light pots that you see here. Those are two different videos. I'll make sure that I link those for you. Now, of course, here's another look at that matching chair and footstool. Now, this was a thrift store find. I absolutely love that basket. And then these were the pillows that I had in the past. I just sat those on the kids' little toy box. They can still lift it up and get to their to toys, but it turned it into like a seating bench and just added extra seating. And I thought that was a great way to use that space. Here are a couple more outdoor videos for you to check out. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you have hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for spending time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.